Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be going through part four of our How to Play a Warcry campaign series. In this video, we'll cover the first part of the Aftermath sequence, which will cover mostly the fighters. We'll look at how to earn and spend glory points, make injury rolls, roll for destiny levels, add and remove fighters, and search for lesser artefacts. After each campaign battle has ended, both players must complete a series of steps referred to as the Aftermath Sequence. It's best for both players to do this immediately after the battle is finished, as it is required that each player witnesses the Aftermath Sequence of the other. There are seven steps in the Aftermath Sequence, and the steps must be completed in order and they go as follows. Number one, earn and spend glory points. Number two, make injury rolls. Number three, roll for destiny levels. Number four, add and remove fighters. Number five, search for lesser artifacts. Number six, advance on the campaign progress tracker. And finally, number seven, earn artifacts of power or command traits. In this video, we'll cover steps one to five, and so let's get started with step one, where we earn and spend glory points. After playing a campaign battle, each player receives a number of glory points as described in the following table. These factors are all cumulative. This table has been taken from page 66 of the core rulebook, and you can use that table or you can choose to use the table from the updated errata and that affects the number of glory points that are assigned to each of the different sections of the table. You'll notice that the order has changed slightly and that the number of points awarded has also changed. Instead of receiving five glory points for winning a battle, you receive two, but you do get three glory points for taking part in a campaign battle rather than the previous one glory point. So there are some benefits there. And so, yep, again, it's up to you which table you choose. If you want to just stay true to the core book, then stick to that. But if you want to use the updated errata, and that's going to help you once you start doing the other campaign quests in all the supplement books, then I would recommend going with the, er uh, the errata and playing with the updated glory points. So once you've played your campaign battle, players note down their total glory points on their warband roster. These glory points are kept from battle to battle during the campaign until spent. There are a few ways that players can spend their glory points during the campaign. These are dominating territory, reinforcements or an additional search roll. Let's take a look at dominating territory first. Players can choose to spend glory points straight away to dominate an area of territory. Each campaign quest has its own territory rules which detail how to dominate territory. For example, many warbands aligned to chaos can raise monoliths with their glory points. You can also use your glory points for reinforcements. Players can choose to spend any of their glory points before picking their warband for a campaign battle if their warband has less dominated territory than their opponent. To do so, they choose to spend either one glory point or three glory points. If they spend one glory point, they can increase the number of points they have available to spend on fighters by 50. If they spend three glory points, they can increase the number of points they have available to spend on fighters by 100. A player cannot spend more than three glory points in this manner before a campaign battle. The final way to spend glory points is through additional search rolls. Players can choose to spend glory points in the search for lesser artifact step. To do so, they can choose to spend three glory points to make an additional search roll upon the lesser artifacts table, which you can find on pages 68 and 69 of the core rulebook. A player cannot spend more than three glory points in this manner during that step. 
may have noticed that when people talk about campaigns and warband rosters, they say that there's a maximum of 1400 points that you can play at any battle. I found this quite confusing because I couldn't find anywhere in the core rulebook that specified this number of points. So I thought this would be a cool time to go through and just explain where that 1400 points comes from. Generally, for each territory dominated by your warband, you increase the points you have available to spend on fighters when mustering your warband for a campaign battle by 50. So with potentially six territories to dominate, that's going to give you a total of up to 300 points that you can keep with you throughout the campaign. So that takes the total up to 1300, but that extra 100 can be brought into play by purchasing reinforcements. When you spend your glory points for reinforcements, you're going to increase your points for fighters by 50 or 100. These points only apply to the next campaign battle and don't carry over. So if you want to keep going at 1400 points, you have to use those glory points before each campaign battle and then increase it by 50 or 100 each time. So I hope that clears up where the 1400 points comes from. It took me a little while to figure that out, but hopefully that makes sense. Now we've covered how to earn and spend glory points. Let's look at step number two, where we make injury rolls. If a fighter from your warband was taken down in the battle, there is a chance the wounds received will be fatal and the fighter will die. You must make an injury roll for each fighter that was taken out in the battle. To do so, roll a 2d6 and consult the table. On a 2 to 3, that fighter is slain. On a 4 to 5, they have lost favour. On a 6 plus, they make a full recovery. If you roll the slain result for a fighter, you must remove that fighter from your warband roster. If that fighter has lesser artifacts or artifacts of power, these two are lost. This will free up a space on your warband roster to add a new fighter, and we'll cover that in a little while. Leaders are known as being destined for greatness. If you roll the slain result for a fighter with the leader rune mark, that fighter does not die. Instead, treat the result as lost favour. It's important to note here that if you're playing a hero or an ally, then the hero or ally is not considered to have the leader rune mark for any other purpose or rule, so that destined for greatness does not apply to them. If you roll the lost favour result for a fighter that has gained any destiny levels, they lose one of those destiny levels, Otherwise, it has no effect. If you roll a full recovery result for a fighter, they suffer no effects. Now let's move on to step 3, where we roll for destiny levels. As your warband grows in power, certain fighters will begin to carve their own legends and stand apart as destined by the gods for glory. After a campaign battle, you can make a destiny roll for each fighter from your warband that was not taken down during the battle. To do so, roll a dice, and on the roll of a six, that fighter gains a destiny level. Mark it on your warband roster by colouring in a destiny level icon. A fighter can have up to three destiny levels at once. Each destiny level gives the following benefit in future campaign battles. This is called Favour of the Gods, and during a campaign battle, a player can choose to spend one of their fighter's destiny levels to re-roll one dice during an attack action made by that fighter. A spent destiny level replenishes at the end of the battle. Now we're on to step 4, where we look at adding and removing fighters. Players can choose to remove any fighters from their warband roster, and add new fighters if there is space. This step uses the following rules. Any fighter except the leader can be removed from your warband roster. If you do so, any lesser artifacts or artifacts of power that fighter bears are lost. 
new fighters can be added to the Warband roster. The limits on page 64 of the core rulebook still apply though when adding new fighters. And we covered these limits in part 2 of the series where we looked at completing the Warband roster. Now we're on to step 5 where we search for lesser artefacts. There are many items of treasure that warbands may come to acquire. Some are much sought after treasures found in hidden vaults, locked away since the age of myth amidst the ruins circling the Varen Spire. Others are more common and can be bartered for and obtained in the dark streets of anarchic settlements. After a campaign battle, each player can make one search roll upon the lesser artifacts table and you can find this on page 68 and 69. When they make the search roll, they'll see if they obtain any lesser artefacts. To do so, roll two dice. The first dice indicates the tens roll, and the second indicates the units roll. This is also referred to as a d66. Then, once you've done that, look up the corresponding result on the table. If your warband obtains a lesser artefact, you must decide which one of the fighters in your warband will bear it. A fighter can bear no more than one lesser artifact at any time, but can bear both a lesser artifact and an artifact of power. Make a note on your warband roster of which fighter bears the lesser artifact. A lesser artifact can never be swapped from one fighter to another, but if you wish for a fighter who already bears a lesser artifact to bear another, you can discard any lesser artifacts they have to allow you to do so. Now let's take a look at how we can use lesser artifacts. Each lesser artifact has a description of how they work on the lesser artifacts table. The rules for a lesser artifact will often refer to the bearer. The bearer is the fighter that bears that lesser artifact. Some lesser artifacts are labelled as consumable. These give the bearer a one-use action they can make when activated. Once the action has been made, that lesser artifact is then removed from your warband roster. Other lesser artifacts are labelled as perishable. These lesser artifacts have rules which are always in play. This means they do not require an action to trigger their effect. However, at the end of a campaign battle, you must roll a dice for each perishable lesser artifact borne by a fighter from your warband that took part in that battle. On a 4+, the lesser artifact retains its power and can remain on your warband roster. On a 1-3, to three, the lesser artifact has lost its power, so remove it from your warband roster. Here you can see the two lesser artifacts tables that you can find on page 68 and 69 of the core rulebook and you can see they're packed with some really fun and cool lesser artifacts that are both perishable and consumable. There's been a great update in the most recent errata and it says here that for the lesser artifacts we should change the first sentence of all consumable lesser artifacts to read as follows consumable. The bearer can use this lesser artifact as a bonus action. This is a brilliant update because now instead of using one of our actions in our activation to make use of a consumable lesser artifact, now it's a bonus action. That's now taken us through the first part of this aftermath sequence where we've gone through steps one through five and now so come and join me for the next part in this series where we'll look at how to advance on the campaign progress tracker, earn artifacts of power or command traits, and we'll also take a look at what happens when you complete a campaign quest and how to choose a new one. Thanks for watching. I really hope this video was helpful. You can find the next episode in the series at the end of this video and also a link to the playlist where you can go right through from part one right through to the end and find out everything you need to know to play a Warcry narrative campaign. I'll put links in the description below to all the things we've used during this series and links to the Catacomb set, the different warbands we've used, the dice and the card sets. There'll be affiliate links to Element Games but they won't cost you anything extra. In fact, they could save you up to 20% 
And for every sale made through an affiliate link, I get a small commission and that's gonna help me develop the channel. So thanks so much for that support. I really appreciate it. If you like the channel and the content I put out and would like to support it further, please take a look at my Patreon page. It's a really great community where we meet on Discord to share our hobby, join in with different conversations around different aspects of the game and a great place to hang out. You can also find perks on there that you're just not gonna get anywhere else. And it'd be awesome to see you there on Patreon. And I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>